You know, it's kind of insane to think about how we went from the original three Star Wars films in the 70s and the 80s to the slow eventual release of a prequel trilogy and all of its associated media like the Clone Wars to now the Disney owned giant that has since produced a new trilogy, the Rogue One and Solo prequels, the Mandalorian and a whole bunch of other Disney Plus shows with even more films in the developmental mix mixed in with all other kinds of media that exist from games, comic books and digital events in Fortnite even. One of the biggest successes for Star Wars when it comes to video games in the last few decades have been the Lego games. There have been a lot of great Star Wars video games, but the Lego Star Wars video games were not only some of the first Lego video games to ever exist, but some of the most successful as it kicked off the entire Lego franchise. And if you've been watching this show, you would know that I already completed Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga many, many years ago. So am I re-completing this game similar to New Game Plus? Well, actually, no, I'm not. See, there's a different title called Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. To the average player, one would think that The Skywalker Saga is just a super duper port of all of the main Lego Star Wars games put together, but that is not the case. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. And today, we're taking a good look at Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Let's begin. Yes! There's two kind of elephants in the room I need to address before we really dive into what the essence of what the Skywalker saga is really about. The original Lego Star Wars games and Crunch. Let's start with the original Lego Star Wars games. The original Lego Star Wars games started with its first title simply called Lego Star Wars. Now, Lego Star Wars covered just the prequel trilogy back in 2005, as that's when Star Wars Revenge of the Sith had come out. It was the first Lego game and it became the blueprint for not just all Lego Star Wars games, but really all of the licensed Lego games that would turn developer Traveler's Tales into the colossal juggernaut that it was. The following year, Lego Star Wars 2 was released, and that focused on the original trilogy, and shortly thereafter, another Lego Star Wars game was released called Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, which acted as a definitive edition that connected both of these games together. Now this right here, this is the game that I completed several years ago, and it was my first Lego experience. Since then, I've gone on to complete Lego Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, and Lego Marvel's The Avengers. And while the games have expanded in growth and size, my general vibe about all Lego games have mostly remained the same. They're easy, they're fun, they're filled with lots of bloat and clunky design choices, but most importantly, they're a blast to play. Traveler's Tales, as a developer, has been around since the late 1980s. It would infamously go on to develop a lot of games for better or for worse, like Sonic R and Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. It wasn't until the Lego games came along where they really exploded in popularity and success. And when I say exploded, I mean exploded. Just look at how many Lego games have been developed in the last two decades alone. There's even an ecosystem of Lego video game YouTubers and creators, which I think is super rad. The scope of each game and franchise for Lego just keeps getting bigger and bigger. More modes, more characters, original voice acting, or using voice acting from various licensed properties versus the mumble talk from the originals. Traveler's Tales would eventually merge with publisher Giant Interactive to become TT Games and would be then acquired by Warner Brothers and become the studio built by Lego Bricks. When Star Wars The Force Awakens came out, there was a new Lego game with that same title that would be released with it. So naturally, you would assume that going forward, Star Wars The Last Jedi and Star Wars Rise of Skywalker would get their own Lego game, but as time went on, no games were announced. Finally, it was revealed that a game called Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga would be released, and it would in fact be a remake of episodes 1 through 7, but also feature original gameplay for episodes 8 and 9 with all new camera and combat components, massive open zone worlds, and hundreds and hundreds of your favorite Star Wars characters that would be playable. This all sounds well and good, but the unfortunate reality is TNT games have had crunch problems for many years. As their 
games got bigger and bigger, the culture around creating their games and commitment to their company got worse and worse. And when it came to LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, it became a huge nightmare. Employees were begging to switch to Unreal, but Skywalker Saga was made in the Entity Engine, which forced all the staff to develop and learn an engine from the ground up, which then added to development time that resulted in several delays, which would become a five-year development cycle. Company culture was at an all-time low, with people leaving the studio, and eventually it was instituted that future LEGO titles would be made in Unreal. Then, in 2022, we saw the release of LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, and despite its rocky developmental cycle, it was relatively well-reviewed. Now that the world has had a lot of time with these titles in their release windows, and with me having completed both of them, I was curious to see which title is more beloved, LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga or LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga? And my preliminary research has led me to believe that nostalgia aside, a lot of folks think that TT Games got it right the first time around. Lots of comparisons have been made regarding the writing, the voice acting or lack thereof, the war on if the gameplay is too simple or should it have been left alone. It's a lot to process. So, for the sake of this essay, I want to try and just focus on what this game has to offer, because there's one unfortunate truth that I have yet to share. This game is flipping massive to complete, and it's going to take a long time to do so. I think that there's this notion that LEGO and LEGO games are just meant for children and that perception makes sense. But looking at the brain as a whole, LEGO is nostalgic for so many people of any age at this point that LEGO fans love LEGO products regardless of the license attached to it. It's always fun to see where it goes, whether it's Sonic, Mario, Back to the Future, The Simpsons, to even the newly announced Legend of Zelda sets. Specifically, one of the biggest has always been Star Wars, and the LEGO Star Wars games reflect its massive impact on the LEGO brand. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga does a wonderful job bringing any and all Star Wars fans down memory lane, providing lots of hours of gameplay and fun. It is overwhelming with what this game brings to the table. But I feel that if you don't understand or like the gameplay loop from the beginning, then get ready to not like the rest of the journey. The gameplay loop is very simple and does not deviate too much from what it establishes. And I guess all that's kind of true with all LEGO games. But the key difference here is that this is yet another opportunity to revisit the entirety of the Star Wars canon. With the amount of content and collectibles in the game, people will feel like they're going to get their money's worth if they enjoy the gameplay loop. Now, I'm gonna leave the nine Star Wars films and their narratives alone when it comes to discussion for what the story is about, because at this point, you should have a pretty good idea about what the story is outside of the LEGO world and what the nine films are if you are paying attention to anything Star Wars related, especially because six of the nine films are pretty hot topic controversial debates. I'm not touching these plots. If you know them, you either love them or you hate them. With how many games that came before it, Skywalker Saga Out the Gate makes three changes that I do have to point out. One, the camera. In most LEGO games, the games really emphasize puzzle platforming over combat with a light focus on exploration, and the camera ends up being kind of predetermined in advance. With the Skywalker Saga, you are in control. It's designed to be positioned more over the shoulder or mostly behind the character, giving you a more intimate feeling with regards to the action. Number two is combat. The combat feels a lot more intentionally designed, and with the camera only aiding that notion, it comes off as a lot more frenetic and interesting. However, given that levels are designed to be a bit shorter this time around, this means that you might get tired of pulling out your blaster and shooting enemies, or mashing square or X to punch, kick, and swing your lightsaber at enemies. And finally, number three, health. Death in LEGO games very rarely have felt consequential, and having a heart container system was never bad by any means. But you'd always end up trying to find these big red hearts. With the Skywalker Saga, you can still pick up hearts when you need to, but shields and health have now turned into a bar and recharge system, and its effectiveness is determined based off the upgrades for all of your characters and their classes that you unlock with the Kyber Bricks. These are really the biggest gameplay changes out the gate between the Skywalker Saga and the Complete Saga. And personally, I I think they are all very welcomed, but I know it's not for everyone. The gameplay loop for Skywalker Saga is as follows. Pick a Star Wars game, the iconic scrolling text from the movie sits you, followed by the pans and wipes to the film's opening moments, and then you are thrusted right into the action as the context zeroes in in the moment. In every stage, there are six mini kits you have to collect that will turn into a mini modeled ship from the Star Wars universe. There's also three secret side objectives that are either relevant to the story or are just gimmicky enough that you'll do it on your own, sometimes on accident. And of 
course, there's the final thing, the necessity of acquiring true Jedi status, which is accomplished by collecting enough Lego studs for the prerequisite scores that are required for each and every stage. All of this is covered head to toe in beautiful Lego graphics. Seriously, this may be the best looking Lego game, and that's hard to say because, well, they're 3D models of Lego pieces, but compared to its predecessors, this game looks phenomenal. One of the Lego game series' best strengths is making child-friendly games that focus on lighthearted comedic fun. It's been the absolute centerpiece of their games, and while over time, the titles went from featuring mumbly protagonists who had to illustrate their words with big dramatic actions and mumbly voices, to fully voice acted characters from all across the Star Wars canon in Skywalker Saga. You've got lots of famous actors, mostly just taking their lines straight from the films themselves, alongside many great sound alikes, and there's still a dash of those fun silent moments that convey the goofiness of Lego. There's just something so fun about Anakin Skywalker in Revenge of the Sith sitting down in front of the Jedi Council at a child school's desk, scribbling about how much he hates people. Needless to say, the writing in this game is great, showcasing that every comedic brick was purposely built for Star Wars fans. In between stages, you'll be treated to big story beats that take place and are usually separated by an open world segment that places you on one of the 24 planets from the Star Wars universe. It is specifically designed when you play the campaign it is not random at all. And once you play them one time, you can unlock them and play them at any given moment going forward in free play mode. These playground set pieces have been built to be massive with loads and loads of side quests, challenges, puzzles, and Easter eggs, encouraging you to collect the game's main collectible, the Kyber Bricks. Kyber Bricks are used to upgrade all different playable character classes. The categories for all the playable characters are as follows. There's Jedi and Dark Side, which are mostly characters that have force powers and lightsabers, heroes and villains, characters that usually have blasters or staff weapons, and can access hero or villain specific chests and kiosks to gain progress or gain temporary powerful weapons. Some of these villains come equipped with the ability to throw a big metal grenade that will destroy metal protected Lego pieces in their items inside. The Scoundrel class effectively is the Han Solo, Chewbacca, scummy villain class that not only have blasters, but they have a specific function in certain rooms. Whether it will be purple interactable environments, you can aim and shoot at them that then cause a chain of events to take down either a bunch of enemies, unlock secrets and missions, and sometimes progress the story depending on the moment that calls for it. Bounty hunters tend to fly, can grapple onto specific ledges, and shoot long range with their blasters. You're going to find that lots of characters in the LEGO Star Wars universe get blasters. Scavengers get a net gun that you can then use to climb and platform, a force type gun that will break certain walls or cages after a couple of shots, and a glider pack that lets the character glide. The last two categories are for astromech droids, droids basically similar to builds and size of BB-8 and R2-D2. These droids can deploy a grapple and can solve a particular circular puzzle where you simply have to align the pieces. And finally, protocol droids, the C-3PO types. They can split into two pieces, talk to different aliens from different planets, and collect passwords throughout the galaxy and use them to open specifically locked doors. Now there's also one category that you cannot upgrade that's just called extras. And that's just where a lot of the random, bizarre characters and creatures from the Star Wars universe appear. All of them have different functions, but for the most part, the normal character ones feel the same. After doing every single mission, side quest, and everything in between, you can play as about 384 playable characters. All of this to say, you can use Kyber Bricks to upgrade all these classes for a bunch of different functions. Most of them revolve around making them more powerful, earning bonus studs for particular actions. But one of the best ones for the droids and certain characters is simply skipping puzzles. Saves you a bunch of time after you've done it dozens and dozens and dozens of times. When you play level from each campaign for the very first time, you are given an assigned set of characters that correspond to the narrative. Once you've cleared the stage for the first time, you unlock free play mode, where you can assign any type of character at any given moment, meaning that you are undoubtedly going to go back and have to replay almost every stage at least once or twice. It is possible to complete some of the stages in one go, but more often than not, you're going to miss a few things because you don't have a character class in your party. But the thing is, when it comes to completing LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, the levels are pretty short once you know what you're doing. Even the few vehicle levels are pretty short. You're going to blast through the campaigns pretty quickly, where the scope of the game really shines or gets bloated, depending on what your perspective is, is the 24 planets. All the planets have an exploration space zone where you're flying a spaceship right outside the planet's atmosphere. When in these zones, there might be a space challenge involving destroying enemies or racing, maybe attacking a stud comet, or even activating or starting a mission to help someone out. 
when you help folks you typically unlock them as playable characters or gain access to their ship and at some point you'll encounter boardable ship quests where you can capture a large spaceship and board it doing so lets you unlock what's called a capital ship or really a big ass ship that is iconic as it is intimidating from there, each planet has anywhere from one to three open world zones to explore, and these on average are pretty massive with anywhere from 10 to 30 side missions and 10 to 30 puzzles. Side missions unlock characters, spaceships, and kyborg bricks, and the side missions themselves are a bit longer to complete, whereas puzzles may involve an array of different activities. Most of these are the same across the entire game, but it could be destroy a certain number of environment pieces, shoot or break targets in a short amount of time, activate the switches. Both types of tasks are designed for you to explore every inch of the galaxy, and let me tell you, this is the gameplay loop for all nine films. You're going to be spending a lot of time exploring galaxies, collecting every single kyber brick, playable character, or pilotable spaceship. And personally, I found this all to be a super enjoyable experience. It feels like, despite the basicness of the LEGO games, Skywalker Saga encourages the player to explore every aspect of what they've created. You will feel overwhelmed the entire time because the game does an awesome job of keeping track of what's left to complete, and it will feel never-ending. But this is kind of where the divide in the bloat versus the fun comes into play. See, it feels good to keep unlocking all the bricks, characters, and ships, but the true Jedi nature of all the playable things in this game is that they all end up feeling like skins outside of their class specific functions another strong point of previous lego games was that all the characters felt different within their own classes and had very unique and specific uses ultimately leading to you customizing your own lego characters but in skywalker saga they tend to feel a little bit more the same outside of their comedic moments and lines when you choose them despite having the ability to choose from all these characters i would just pick my favorites and use them almost exclusively in free play mode i literally had three different versions of ray in my party at any given moment just because i could but once again, they all had fun and cute lines that were always cool to listen to. Even the ships feel like skins as they almost all function the exact same way. So with all this under our belts now, LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is so incredibly stuffed with wonderful charm, with a large amount of playable characters and ships from almost every aspect of Star Wars history, packed in with the simplistic gameplay from the LEGO franchise. All this together marks the overall completion experience to be a very easy but time-consuming experience. The question is, is it worth all of your personal investment from a time perspective? Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga was, for me, a wonderful time sink. I felt like I got my money's worth from what was required and asked of me to complete this game. I feel like a broken record because I almost always feel this way when it comes to Lego titles, but the amount of love, passion, and content put into the game made me feel respected for said time sink. So with completion in the brain, there are a few key elements that will make your own journey for completion much easier. Cheat codes via enabling studs and data cards. A lot of people are always looking up the best place to farm for studs but once you unlock one of the multipliers you pretty much will just snowball and get hundreds of millions even billions of studs the studs will help you purchasing ships other cheat codes and if you need to you can purchase hints and instructions for all the various side missions quests and challenges outside of the stud multipliers most of the cheat codes are just silly although one of the best cheat codes for those of you who don't want to look everyone up on youtube is the code that outlines everything with the blue circle that's related to a side mission quest puzzle character ship or kybor brick basically an unlockable or a completable speaking of cheat codes there are a few codes you can type in that will unlock a few exclusive characters and ships most of the characters revolve around holiday variants there's two ship codes one for a ship called razor crest and the other is the galaxy edges transport which is the name of the land for star wars at disneyland and world fun easter eggs here for sure now i did buy all of the available dlc packs for the skywalker saga and almost all of them are directly related to a ton of disney plus shows and spin-off films like rogue one and solo a star wars story each come with characters and ships. But as I stated earlier, they're just skins, and personally, I think it's a waste of money unless you really love the associated content. When you have finally completed all the campaigns, unlocked all the mini ships by collecting all of the mini bricks and doing all the side objectives, earned true Jedi status on all stages, collected all 1200 Kybor bricks by completing all side missions, challenges, puzzles, and collecting each and every ship, capital ship, and upgraded all of your characters, you will notice 
that you have completed 100% of the galaxy, and it's time to earn your reward. Head over to Yavin 4 and go to the very top of the temple. Once you're at the top, you will see this 100% floating above a switch. When you hit the switch, it will rain tons of confetti and an unlimited amount of studs are collected while the main cast of all the Star Wars titles jump around celebrating and cheering you on. Not sure if this is like the best use of a completion experience, but it does feel very good to have something for everything you've earned. Earning all the trophies in the game is a pretty easy feat as long as you complete the game as you go. The trophies are very doable no matter when you start trophy hunting. Nothing is too difficult at all. No trophy is missable. But because there's so many things to do do, see, collect, and complete, you will be putting a ton of time into it. And in the end, it feels good to get that platinum trophy. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is a vastly different experience to the complete saga that came before it. This is one of those few times where the dopamine hit of completion feels good throughout, and the time you spend will fly by quickly even if the time invested goes up and up. I really enjoyed every single minute of completing this game, but after all has been said and done, I feel conflicted. On one hand, the game respected everything I did and then some. On the other, hot damn does it feel bloated at times. The humor and charm is wonderful, and it's never bad to have an easy but fulfilling platinum. So with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of completed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.